Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to a new game called Stranded Alien Dawn. This game came out in early access just last October, and it is developed by Hamamont Games, the same folks who brought us Surviving Mars, which obviously caught my attention. I'll be honest, I was kind of expecting this game to be similar to that one, with some city builder and calling builder mechanics on a strange alien world. But no, actually, this game is a lot more like RimWorld. Like, a lot like RimWorld. Like, maybe too much like RimWorld for some people. Yet you have to admit, just looking at it, it is a visually stunning game, fairly accessible in its mechanics and layout, and I will say some of the mechanics are similar, but they're different enough that I think this makes this game fairly distinct and interesting. So, we're gonna go ahead and jump into a new game today. We'll play around with this for a little bit. Not too sure how long, kinda depends on you guys how long this series is going to go, but I wanna explore what mechanics and features it has to offer, and get some sense of its development cycle and where it's going to end. End up. So starting up a new game, we only have one scenario currently available in this version of the game, and it is called Crash Landing. If that sounds like something from RimWorld, it's because it's very, very similar. You're going to have four passengers on one emergency landing pod, and our goal is to find a way back to civilization. There are two regions currently available in the game with more to come. We have a desert, and we have a uh, large meadow in a mountainous area. I think we'll play with that for now. That's the classic experience. And then we have moons. Now, moons may seem like a weird thing to choose, but they're kind of like the storytellers from other similar games. We have Concordia, which is the goddess of balance. We have Jason, which sends tough challenges, but give you enough time to prepare for them. We have Nyx, which makes scary things happen at night. And then finally, Chaos, where everything gets absolutely randomized. Yeah, again, sounds kind of familiar. The other modifiers, I'm gonna be leaving alone. Nothing to change there. Next thing we need to do is choose our starting cast. There is a roster of pre-built characters that we can pick from. Give me a minute to figure out some that I think will work for this playthrough. I think this could be kind of okay for us. All right, so we've got Emelyn, the exotic cuisine chef, a very talented cook who makes other people happy with her incredible skill. She'll get a bit better at it because she is interested in cooking and she has a cheerful personality. We've got Jack Davies, the discharged general, very good at combat and physical activity, also a combat instructor who makes other people better at fighting. Quinn Windu, a spaceship architect, loves going on expeditions, very cheerful, pretty darn good at construction, interested in intellectual activity, activities, and some crafting. And then finally, we have Rita, an adventurous botanist. Naturally curious, able to find unknown species during expeditions, also very cheerful, extremely talented at farming, and interested in learning how to cook as well. Pretty smart girl. So interesting to note about her, though, she also has a cousin in this crew list. That is Raka over here. Not sure if there's any advantage to bringing family members or people with relationships on the same uh, team, or maybe we'll run into some of them in the future. No clue. But for now, I think this will be a good team of four people to get started. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are coming in for a bit of a tough landing. I'd recommend you check your fasteners and put your head between your legs and kiss your bum goodbye. Splaboosh. All right, and we have survived that, excellent. So here's our guys, and it looks like Quinn is already broken down and is crying, but Jack is on his way to try to calm him down, that's very sweet. So welcome to our new temporary home. This world is completely unknown to us. We have no idea what's safe, no idea what to expect. We just know that we need to survive at any cost and brave the elements. Along the way, we will be discovering all manner of different fauna and flora, looking for ways to harness them for our survival, build out a cool base, and then find our way back to civilization, somehow. First thing we want to do, gather up some basic resources. I'm going to go ahead and start chopping down some trees, let's say over here. I'd also like to clear out any bushes or any other plants. Uh, sure, let's see, these are peculiar bushes worth some sticks. Yeah, that'll be fine. Let's go ahead and start harvesting some of those as well. Beyond that, let's go to the pod, mark this thing for some scavenging, and that should be good enough just to get us started with some basic resources. Now we need to figure out where we want to place down some shelters. We can get attacked in this game. At some point, the local wildlife might take a bit of an interest in us, and that could become a bit dangerous. Might make sense to try setting up over this direction, kind of along some of these rocks. This might be a good natural place for us to defend. I kind of like that idea. So let's go ahead and click on camp down here, and we're gonna be building out some scrap metal shelters. Now there's nothing special about these. They got three walls and a roof. That's really about all we have to look forward to here. But it does provide us some needed sleeping spots and a roof over our heads. So I'm happy with that. We'll place two close together. Then we'll place down some sleeping spots on the ground. So one, two, three, four should be enough to get us started. And also how about a quick stockpile like this? so we can keep everything nicely safe under one roof. 
Perfect. All right. And I think I'm sensing some shaky shakes. Um, or I think... Oh, well, God, there we go. I was going to say, I think there's more stuff falling from space. Sure enough, there's some debris right there. Woo! Okay. So, one thing I want to do right away is go to our management tab over here and click on activities. And this is where we can determine what priorities people are going to have. Again, if this looks kind of familiar, it's because it should. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be hearing that a lot in this game. So, let's go ahead and sort through all of these, figure out what we want people to do, what priorities they're going to follow, and make sure no one is overtasked. I think something like this is going to work for us for now. So, Emmelyn will be our cook primarily, then delivering some resources. Jack is going to be our hunter and also do a lot of our physical manual labor. Quinn will do construction and then some of our research. And then Rita will be mostly farming, also some research, and able to deliver some materials. All right, this seems like a good start. We can also go to our schedule and manage this. I want to make sure everyone is getting enough sleep every day. We also want to give them a little time for some relaxation, let's say in the morning, a bit more in the afternoon, plus some work hours. This should be okay. Actually, maybe let's move over this a little bit like so. I want to make sure that people are sleeping through some of the cold nights. That'll be a little bit better. All right, that should be enough to kind of get people going. Quinn's going to get over here and start constructing some of our shelters, so this is looking just fine and dandy. Thank you very much. Click on this button at the top right, and you can actually see the roofs and stuff. This becomes helpful because you can build out some nice modular multi-story buildings at some point, I believe. But for now, this will be fine. Actually, maybe not multi-story. I could be wrong on that. But regardless, uh, you can build out some much nicer structures than this. This is all very, very temporary. What the heck is this little thing over here? It is some sort of a bloated insect thing. You call that an insect? Good God, it's, it's an abomination is what it is. These little guys are going to be way more fun. Big horned animal. Yeah, very apt description. Uh, the reason we are giving these guys kind of dumb names and stuff is because we actually don't know anything about them yet. So early on in the game, something you'll want to spend a little bit of time doing is observing both the plants and the local wildlife. Learn whether they are safe for us, what we can do with them. And uh, maybe how to kill them, depending. It kind of depends. So, for example, we have a pointy red plant over here. What is this going to do for us? I don't know. You'd click on this little observe button over here. And what would happen is somebody who is marked for the observing skill over here, so probably Quinn, or actually we'll go ahead and set that to mostly be Rita, would come over here and spend about a day, maybe a day and a half or so observing it and finding out what its properties are. Same with these peculiar bushes. Something really important to figure out early on is a food source. So I'm going to look around over here and see if I can spot something that I know is for food. These guys, there we go, squash-like plants. Let's go ahead and mark those for observation. Now, Quinn's a little bit bored at the moment, so let's have him work on some other stuff. I need to get a workbench where we can do a lot of our early game crafting. That would make some sense, so we'll do something like that right there. I also want to get myself a wooden research bench, somewhere where we can do a bit of studying and unlock some new tech. We'll place you there. Let's also place down a scrap metal campfire so we can do our cooking and keep things lit up and warm at night. Perfect. There's not going to be a whole lot for us to do with the wooden workshop to start. We can craft up some bandages or extract animal fats, but I'll worry about that another time. The uh, wooden research desk will be a bit more useful. Let's click on this. And one of the first things I'm going to go ahead and research is a lightning rod. I know that sounds like it should be a low priority, but in some of my test games with this, uh, I've had a thunderstorm come in within the first day and start zapping people and literally hit the same piece of furniture five times in a row and destroy it. So just to be safe, it doesn't take very long. Let's, um... Let's just go ahead and get ourselves a lightning rod and make sure that that's not going to be an issue. While Rita's working on that, I'm also going to go over to this campfire and we're going to set up some recipes. So right here, we don't have the grain, vegetables, or meat to make any sort of good soup, but I can boil up some of my emergency rations, which sounds kind of gross, but it's going to make them a little bit more tolerable. No one likes those freeze-dried protein cubes or anything, you know? You just soak them in some water and it's a little bit nicer. It is a vegetarian meal, increases happiness by six. We'll click on this. And I'll have this set up so we do this until there is always four cooked emergency rations. The idea being that Evelyn should be, a oh, sorry, Emmeline should be able to make sure that there's enough cooked meals at any time to feed the entire crew, and the rest can just sit in storage and maintain their shelf life. Now, your individual characters have a lot of different properties associated with them. We have our health, happiness, fullness, rest, and relaxation. We also know what their temperature tolerances are. And it got a little bit chilly last night, but we're just barely able to handle some of that right now. We can also see the individual health of our people. Looks like they are suffering some smoke inhalation from the crash, which makes some sense. Uh, we can see more information about their individual happiness. So, for example, people don't like eating without a table. Who would have guessed? We can also find out a bit more about their inventory. So, for example, Jack, I'd like you to go ahead and wield the only laser pistol in our group because, uh, well, it would make sense to have some defense. 
I'll come back to that thought since it looks like Rita is interrupting me. We put together a camp as quick as we could, considering the circumstances. We are not sleeping in the dirt. We have a roof over our heads and a fire to illuminate the dark, uncertain nights. And most important, we have survived. To us, this feels like an achievement worth honoring. Let's have a celebration around the campfire. Sure, sounds good. Anyway, I can also take a look at the individual skills. We can find out a bit more about the um, background of some of these characters. And we can also restrict some things. I'm going to tell people not to eat any raw food. I don't want to eat any raw meat or vegetables. Let's try to always cook it. Rita, how you doing with those squash-like plants over here? They look a lot like pumpkins to me. If I landed on an alien world and I saw this, I'd be like, Oh, look, it's a pumpkin, and I'd eat it immediately, and my te intestines would probably explode. Rita's being far more methodical. She just kind of looks at it. What is going on over here? How do these things even work? How do they grow? Oh, that one got bigger. How do these things work? What does it mean? I don't know. She'll figure it out for us, I'm sure. All right, we've got our lightning rods. Let's go ahead and start working on things like some weapon smithing. I'd like to have some defenses because within the first couple of days, you can very easily get attacked. Let's also set up one of those lightning rods since I said I was going to do it. This should provide some nice coverage. Discovery, buttermelon. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not a pumpkin. You've renamed them to buttermelons. Okay, fair enough. So these things are something we can harvest for a fair bit of extra food, but just as important, now that we have uncovered it, I can start farming these things. So let's go ahead and set up a quick little farm over here. There's lots of soil, so they should grow very rapidly over here. All right, everyone, gather around the fire. Time to celebrate our survival. Yeah, we crashed. Y'all did the absolute bare minimum to not die by not dying. Good for you. Blamed Quinn for the crash. And Evelyn, what, that's, just, that's just totally unnecessary. What did Quinn win to ever do to you? There are some little details for this game that I really appreciate. Case in point, look at this campfire, right? We got a little light source. We got these little metal poles here to hold down some food while it's being cooked. And that's enough to create some proper shadows. Now, it's little things like that that I just think add a little bit of awesome immersion into the game. That's pretty nice. All right, I'll finally give you guys a table so you can stop complaining. How's that sound? Let's just go ahead and place down a table plus a couple of wooden chairs. Rita's gonna get around here and plant down all them buttermelons. All right, so we've got a sustainable, renewable source of food. That's a really big milestone. It's a good thing these guys don't actually need, like, water or anything, you know? Because, like, I don't think I see any sources of water on this entire dang planet. Ooh, what is that? Is it a dodo? It's a little flightless bird. Well, you look like fun. You're injured. Oh, okay. You can see that it was bleeding there. It's got its own little nest over here, too. Fun. Weapon smithing is done. Perfect. Let's go to our workbench, and I'm gonna go ahead and craft myself a couple of weapons. Could get a bow, which is not the worst thing. Probably more important, though, that we go ahead and craft out at least a couple of spears. Three times might be excessive, but I think that's good enough. Jack may have a ranged weapon, but if anything gets up close and personal, we'll wish that we had some spears to go around. And I want to make sure other people have some basic armaments in case we get attacked by... Oh, something. I don't know. It's a new planet. You never know what's out here. Ah, oh, it's a thunderstorm if ever there was one. All right. Well, I'm going to be really glad that I have this lightning rod. I'm expecting it to get shot any second now. Hopefully, Quinn doesn't die over here getting scavenged. Yeah, because that, uh, that can totally happen. I'm not kidding. I've seen the lightning just, like, hit the same thing several times in a row or knock someone out. It's, uh, it's kind of spoopy. Found some liquid fuel. Highly flammable substance. Yeah, that could be uh, very helpful at some point. If we take a look at the research, actually, let me go to the research bench and look at this over here. Uh, we will at some point need to research some defense, including flamethrowers and automated turrets. And the flamethrowers actually use some of the liquid fuel, uh, understandably. These are very, very important for your defense uh, eventually, because enemies will start spawning up huge waves and trying to attack you. You know, kind of like you would get in a game like RimWorld, but as far as I know, uh, nothing intelligent. So far, I've only ever been attacked by some local wildlife. Still, that is a thing. Hey, Jack, uh, why don't you go over here and you grab a spear? There, you'll be fully decked out. So now you'll be safe and ready to deal with any threats that approach us, which will probably happen sometime soon. We've discovered that these peculiar bushes are actually full of fruit. Nice! Now, unfortunately, these berries do not count as a vegetable or anything you can turn into some cooked food, but they do make for a really awesome emergency meal or something if people need it. So we'll let them go ahead and eat those things. Uh, I'll go over here to raw food, and raw fruits like bush fruits, those are completely fine. You guys can eat those. 
I mean, unless you're going to have some sort of food poisoning. Oh, gosh. That could be a thing. I have no idea. Anyway, back under research. What else do we want? I'm going to go ahead and learn... Oh, winemaking with berries. Really? Oh, okay. That could be kind of fun. Well, let's go ahead and learn about tailoring, because I feel like getting some additional clothing could be helpful for us. Some people are getting a little bit cold at night, and I feel like having some jackets or some hats or something to deal with that would make some sense. There is um, a season mechanic in the game. If you look at the very top left, you can see we are right now in the spring season. Heading towards summer, then there's going to be autumn and a winter. Uh, if you started off in the desert, you'd have basically just the wet season and the dry season, and that's just about it. What's with this flightless bird? Oh, it died. Aw, that's sad. Actually, wow, by sitting out here, it actually has a pool of blood underneath it. That's, uh, again, a kind of a weird little twist to it. But okay, we could butcher this up and get some meat, but at this point, I don't know. It, it's mostly decomposed. Let's just let it do its thing. Over here, we have a twisted plant. We should observe these things and find out what they have to offer, but I'm also pretty sure we can cut those down safely, and that will let us place down like a punching post or something. You know, something for entertainment. Ah, uh, okay, we found some aggressive animals. Let's click on this, and yep, it's a whole bunch of overgrown insects. Very basic enemy, but eventually these guys are going to get together and attack us. Hey, Jack, um, I want you to draft up, and we are gonna have you come and deal with some of these things. And you know what, Emelyn? Let's just draft you up as well. I'll let Jack do most of the work, but just back him up, okay? Back him up. So we're gonna get in range over here for his ranged weapon. He should be able to take a few hot shots right about now. Pew, there we go. All right, go ahead and hit him. Perfect. Uh, Emelyn, get a little bit closer up. Maybe you can help out. There we go. Just watch his back. Everything's gonna be fine. We can handle these bugs. It's just a couple little bugs. They're not that bad. There are much more dangerous enemies out there, but with a laser pistol, nah, Jack can handle it. He's a good shot. There we go. I should more or less deal with it. Never mind. There's one more bug hiding up over this away. We'll just take a shot at it. Pew. There we go. All right. Problem solved. Everyone can undraft. And with that, we've actually got a whole bunch of bugs uh, that we can now butcher if we want to eat some insect meat. A little gross, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Now, Jack has an injury. We can see over here on his leg, he has a couple of superficial bites. Um, we can wait for some treatments. And getting treated would not be a bad plan. I don't really love the idea that someone's going to waste our medicine on superficial bites. So maybe I just don't let you do this. You can be in a little bit of pain. You'll be fine. Let's just not waste anything. Or actually, no, it's completely fine. Click over here and you see that uh, the treatment doesn't require any medicine. Ah, uh, never mind. We'll just let him rest it off then. That's fine. You did a good job. So let's do some meat soup. And I'm going to do this until we have four. It's going to take a bunch of meat in order to make a couple of meals. I'll make this a higher priority, and I guess we'll leave the cooked emergency rations on here for now. That's probably fine, but we could just go ahead and cancel this. I don't know. I want Emelyn to just basically make sure that we make some delicious insect meals. If anyone could figure it out, it's going to be our exotic chef. Now, what do we discover over here? Silicon leaf. Uh, okay, the weird red spiky things are silicon leaf that we could farm to make silicon. Interesting. Okay, I don't know what we're going to do with any of that information, but it's there. So we should be able to start producing some clothing. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a wooden tailor bench. Let's we'll go ahead and move this over here. And once this sucker is built up, we can craft ourselves some clothes. What are we missing? A jacket for Emmeline, hat for Jack, a jacket for Quinn, and a hat for Rita. Okay. Fair enough. Pretty even distribution of stuff. Um, should be able to make that. We do actually have some fabrics that we were able to discover from the crash which appears to be basically empty at this point. We can scavenge from some spaceship debris over here if we want to. But for right now, I'm feeling pretty good about our current situation, so let's not worry about any of that. Let's see, light jackets or proper coats. We can only really make one. And there's hats. Uh, does increase your tolerance for various forms of temperature. We can build out a couple of those. Beanies for cap. Mm, all right, let's um, let's go ahead and make out a couple of these baseball caps, but uh, I would really like to find a way to produce some more fabric. Anything we can research that would make a big difference right now? Winemaking would be fun, but totally unnecessary. Let's go for some construction basics. I need to be able to make a proper home because these shelters are not going to cut it in the long term. We want to lay down the foundations for a proper house. So, uh, Emmeline, how is the uh, how is the bug soup? Is it any good? Did you actually manage to pull it off? Let's see. Ah, quick meal and an exquisite meal. Yeah, all right, she loves it. We discovered skin bark. Okay, we are twisted shapes of purple plants for alien fossilized trees. We can now harvest these things and craft veggie leather on a workbench. 
All right, then. What else we discover over here? Heptagonia. Uh, these weird tubular plants. Okay. Grows slowly but thrives in poor soils and harvests at regular intervals. We can harvest sweet syrup from these things used for cooking. Okay. Let's go ahead and start clearing out some of these rocks. There are kind of a lot in this area. And I'm envisioning that having some stone for a proper foundation of a home would make a lot of sense. So we'll just go ahead and get these things all out of my way. Whoa, that was some lightning right there. Thank you, Lightning Rod. You probably saved us from getting killed. All right, so I just got an achievement, actually, for not hurting any animals for a while. I think the bugs would beg to differ, but that's all right. Um, I see a single straggling big horned animal. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go kill it. Jack, let's get over here and see if we can kill this thing. I need some proper leather. Pew, 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 pew. There we go. Shoot that thing. Oh, it's just standing there looking at you sadly with giant doe eyes. There we go. Problem solved. All right. So let's go ahead and butcher this thing. <sighs> We're going to find out what this thing can offer us. Presumably a lot of meat. Hopefully some nice leathers as well. Yep, sure enough. We get some leather. All right. And that also completes the construction basics. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and start researching... Ooh, how about the spaceship deconstruction? There's plenty of ruins around here, and it would make some sense to be able to get everything out of them. So far, things are going really well for us. So before I end up this video, I think the big task I'd like to complete is starting to set up a proper house. Get people out of these crummy shelters and into something that's a bit more respectable. For that, we go under buildings down over here. We can set down some basic flooring. There's walls, roofs. We can also set up some just basic rooms and... Just do it kind of like this way, and that way it's all kind of done. What I want to do is have a proper bedroom or a dormitory, barracks, whatever you want to call it, with a heat source. And I'm going to want a kitchen. Those are the two things I want. Ooh, also a punching pole, just so people can vent out some frustration. I should have plenty of stone, but also plenty of trees as well. Eh, all right, let's just, um, let's, let's start by setting up some stone flooring, I think. Yeah, that'll be fine. And how big do I want this to be? Let's think. We're going to have to have a couple of beds, plus some space between them, plus a couple more spaces for beds. We want to have some room for a stone thing. This should be good enough. This should be good enough for a basic bedroom. Let's do that. And then we have to attach a couple of stairs because it's slightly elevated. Now, different materials are going to have some different properties to them that make them beneficial. For example, stone and wooden walls have some medium thermal insulation as opposed to sticks and scrap which are awful. So ideally, you never really want to use those for that purpose. And since there's plenty of trees and I happen to be set up in an area with loads and loads of stone, we can afford to be a fair bit luxurious with our home. I want some good insulation. Let's get some stone walls set up over there. I'm also going to want to have a proper door. We'll make it out of wood, place it right along there next to the steps. And let's also place down a wooden ceiling to this thing. I'm just mixing up the materials for a little bit of an aesthetic choice. Doesn't really matter. Wood, stone, eh, they're about the same for me. I could have just used the room building thing and it would have been a lot faster, but this way I got to mix and match for just aesthetic purposes. So the first building is getting set up right about now. Perfect. Let's go ahead and plan out some furniture. Should have enough fabric or something with which we can set up some wooden beds. I appear to be completely out of logs. That's interesting. Uh, do we want to use fabrics, or do we want to use the wooden skin bark? I'm going to go with fabrics to sound way more comfortable, so let's do that. Never mind, I don't have any more fabrics. I've only got access to the skin bark. All right, I have no idea how comfortable that stuff is going to be, but that's what you get. Oh, great. More aggressive animals. This time they got a huge overgrown insect over here. These guys are going to be attacking me pretty soon. Uh, Jack, Rita, Emelyn, I'm going to draft all of you guys, and let's go ahead and deal with them before they get close. I don't have any walls, I don't have any defenses, so we are going to go ahead and be aggressive. Might as well. There we go. Took that thing out without too much issue. Emelyn's taking some very superficial damage. Overall, not that bad. They're kind of uh, holding a shield wall for Jack so he can just shoot them all, which is very convenient, I must say. Ah, I... Dang it, Jack got bitten, though. Uh, okay, that means we need to get ourselves a bandage. It's not life-threatening, but, like, you don't want to take a risk with any of that stuff. Let's go ahead and make a bandage real quick. Veggie leather, yeah, that'll be fine. 
There we go. I think this is a pretty reasonable starting domicile. There's a lot more I'm going to need to do here, of course. We need some light sources, because people do tend to get very upset in the dark. We need some windows, we need some heat, we need some air conditioning. And we also have some room to expand out a proper kitchen and dining room area. I think that's all going to work out very nicely for us. Everything else over here is being converted into some basic storage. Already harvested our first round of the buttermelon, so we got plenty of food to go around. If anything, I've got way too much. I need to start getting rid of some of this stuff. We've got a lot of skim bark growing over here as well, so we'll have more sources of fabrics. And otherwise, I think that's about everything I wanted to accomplish in this first video. Survived against two waves of bugs. They're going to get bigger and stronger and more frequent and stuff at some point. Eventually, we'll have more than just little bugs. We'll have actual dangerous predators. That's all going to happen at some point. But for now, as long as we don't mess it up, we should take care of our basic needs. And we should be able to just continue building and expanding, getting some defenses up and running and just survive in this horrible wasteland of an alien world. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're looking forward to this series and you do want to see more, I would humbly ask that you hit that like button and leave a comment. That kind of engagement actually... Thanks, feedback form. That, that really accentuates my point. That kind of engagement actually really does help me have an idea what you guys want to see more of, so I really would appreciate that. Subscribe if you have not already, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.